those yeah. fires, those fires out in California going yeah, crazy. It's crazy right now. Um, I was watching the Weather Channel this morning, and pretty much the wind gusts are so high that areas that aren't even close to the fire are still catching on fire. You know what I mean? Because no. the winds are blowing these burning embers, burnt pieces of bark, whatever, you know, debris, um, blowing it to these different parts that aren't even near the fire, but they're being affected. So I saw this one guy saying basically save this neighborhood because he was standing on his roof with a garden hose and like shooting, spraying the what? embers as they were falling. Like he said, like a tree caught on fire, like something else caught on fire. And I don't know if people were, I, got, I think the firefighters ended up getting there too to help. And that's what they were doing, just spraying it as it's coming down. And I mean, that's just one little neighborhood, you know? Mm-hmm. And there are other places I saw that weren't even by the fire, but they completely burned down because something caught on fire. You know, different stores and houses. Um, they were saying, uh, like, for instance, one neighborhood, it was like a wooden staircase that went through, I guess, the row of houses. Mm-hmm. So that shit just lit up. And then everything else just started to burn, you know. And um, everything is so dry out there. The air is so dry. I think they just went through a dry spell, mm-hmm. you know, of not having rain and stuff. So that's really not helping. So you see, I think it was almost a total from the north, from North California and South California combined. It's like almost a total of two hundred thousand acres God. that are burning. Yeah, and they said up north only twenty percent contained right now. So I'm like, ooh, that's not a lot. So they were saying it's just, I don't know how they measure this stuff, but they're saying the afternoon was going to be. Um, all right, so today is Sunday, November 11th, by the way. We're talking about this. Yeah. So um, they're saying that by the afternoon, the wind gusts are going to be at the highest, and then it's going to start to dwindle down. So I don't know what's going on, but it's it's a lot. Yeah, it um, looks really bad. Yeah, it's really unfortunate. Um, uh, the last time I heard, it was like there was like a, a death, death count of nine. Yeah, now it's up to 23. Um, but you know that's still not really, and it's sad because a lot of people, because the fire spreading so fast, a lot of people mm-hmm. trying to drive away end up burning up. You know, some people are driving literally through flames trying to get out of there, and you know traffic is nuts. Yeah. Or some people didn't think that they were, they were in danger. Like I think I was watching one segment on the Weather Channel, and this guy was talking to, um, this reporter. I mean, was talking to this woman, and she was saying how waiting to see if she needed to evacuate or not. You know. And I think she had a, a a handicapped mother. And all of a sudden, like late, like not even that far after they had spoke, all of a sudden somebody's backyard was on fire, probably from falling debris. So, so and then they were trying to get control of it. So like firefighters were like trying to axe down the gate to the backyard to try to get back there to be able to put it out. So she came back out and she saw it on fire and she's just like, oh my God, like, you know, mm-hmm. trying to run back and rush and get her mom. And I know her mom, like they said, it takes like 20 minutes just to get from upstairs to downstairs. So it's like trying to rush and, you know, get your things to get the hell out of the neighborhood. So that's what I'm thinking about the other people that might've got trapped in the fire trying to drive out, you know, it might've been like all of a sudden something's on fire, you know, and they it wasn't even next to them or like in their, you know, area, all of a sudden something's on fire in your neighborhood. And you're trying to rush and pack up and get the hell out of there. And fire spreads so quickly. You know, it's really sad. Um, and then they had a segment there talking about, you know, talking to kids about these natural disasters. I'm like, right? These kids be going through hurricanes, fires, all that type of stuff. Yeah. Like, they have to be terrified. So, I don't know how. This is the biggest fire ever in um, California. In history. California yeah. history, right? So... Yeah, I don't know. Hopefully they get it contained soon. But they said at this point the firefighters are being spread so thin because there's just fires popping up everywhere from the wind. You know, so I don't know if people, if firefighters from other states are starting to come in, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm surprised they haven't declared like a national emergency or something like that. You know, I just saw that Trump released some bullshit statement kind of saying if forests rangers manage their forests better or some shit yeah i saw that i saw that yo (laughs) but i'm like isn't this a state of emergency like (laughs) and i don't even see the news like covering it like that like regular news sources i just been watching weather channel like the regular news sources covered but it's very brief they just keep talking about dumb government stuff that's a bunch of hearsay and speculation and i'm like shouldn't y'all be talking about the fires (laughs) 
So I was thinking about that the other day. Like we live in the Northeast and we see four seasons. We get hurricanes. We get these blizzards. Mm-hmm. And right, and everybody goes to California for the weather and stuff like that. But like every now and then, they gotta deal with a fire, son. They got yeah. that whole <laughs> you know state saying? about to be on fire. I saw the damn map, and they were showing the radius of like critical and extreme and whatever. I'm like, it's basically the whole state is lit up. I'm like, yo. I don't oh. think I'd want to deal with fire, yo. I think I'd take snow. You know we about to get some damn snow. Like I it's it's, it's crazy. Week. It's like yeah, on that end it's literally on fucking fire. And then Listen, coming yeah. towards the east coast, out there in the Midwest, up to no, way upper northeast, it's fucking snow coming. Like I think way up north, like Massachusetts and shit, they're about to get a fucking foot. I was like, dang. And yeah, I, I, really I saw on the forecast snow, yeah. Thursday we might get some flurries. I'm like, come on, y'all. I really hate what snow. What is this? What is this? So yeah. Oh, Pray no. for California. For real. Hearts and prayers for California. Hearts and prayers in Thousand Oaks, California. Yeah, you heard about that? Yeah, and the shooting too. That's yeah, why it's the like shooting. there's a lot going on right now. There's a lot going on. What's the latest you heard on that? Have you Nothing heard really. I just see stuff about the fire. It's like the fire is overshadowing that situation, as far as you know, news coming out of California. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah crazy. because they're not even talking about that on regular news sources. You know, isn't that wild mm-hmm. that they're not even covering it like that anymore? Well, uh, yo, how much do you think that is us desensitized to mass shootings? No, that's what or... I'm saying. Yeah, that's what exactly what I mean. At this point, it's just like, oh, another one happened. Yeah. They talk about it for like two days and then. I saw that father on. talking. Oh, my God. God. I know that was so heartbreaking. Yeah, that was heartbreaking. Then I saw the mother talking. And, yeah, uh, I saw that one too. The mother, uh, she, her son was in Las Vegas for the other mass shooting, mm. and came back home just to uh-huh. be killed in this one. Wow! And she said, "No more prayers, yo." She mm-hmm. said, "No more prayers." She said, I, "I, I want gun control." Yeah, and I saw too one guy who, uh, was in the Las Vegas one and in the Cali one too, mm. and he said that it was basically like. A group of them from Las Vegas, they would meet up there to kind of, you know, find support in each other. And like that was kind of their safe space. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, it's something else going. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like something else going on. I feel like it. You know, because it's like, how the fuck? What are the fucking odds? Yeah. How do you run into some final destination type shit? You know what? A manager where I used to work at, he Mm -hmm. was in both. Both, uh, what's it called? Uh, what? Both attacks in New York. The one in the 90s and 9-11. What happened in the 90s? Uh, what's it called? The bomb? It was a bomb going to the... Golly, I can't even bring this up and I don't have all the information. Oh, was like it five. another trade center? Yeah, it was another okay, trade center. Okay, I heard about that. I heard yeah. about that. The first, he was okay. in both. I know he was not. in wow. both of them. Yeah. What happened in 9-11? How did he get out? He actually worked in the building. And no, so was he there that day? Yeah, he was there that day. He was. How did, what floor you know, was he on? How did he get out? His whole story was crazy. So he was. Mm-hmm. It, the 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 impact of the plane was oh mm-hmm. he was beneath he was beneath the impact of it. Mm-hmm. And when it hit, you know, rock the building, everybody falls over, and then you kind of just don't know what's going on. Yeah. And he was explaining it to me, and he was saying how you couldn't take the elevators, obviously, so everybody was on the stairs. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I, I guarantee it. Like, as I'm making my way down, he was like, there was this one very over overweight gentleman mm-hmm. that he offered to try to help. And the guy was like, just go. He was like, he knows he passed a lot of people on those stairs that didn't make it out. Mm-hmm. And anybody above the impact, there was no way they could get down. Yeah. So then um, he said he made it all the way down. And that's when he was greeted by some of the officers. Mm-hmm. Or whatever, and officers were kind of directing them what direction to go. Mm-hmm. Officers said, "Hey, keep your head straight. Don't look to the sides. Mm-hmm. None of that." Mm-hmm. People were jumping. Yeah. So as so, if he looked over to the side, he was going to see bodies yeah. hitting oh the ground. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he said he finally got out. Um, he met up with somebody because you know you couldn't get any service that day. Mm-hmm. Couldn't call nobody. Mm-hmm. Phones was going crazy. Finally met up with somebody and they kind of just had to like 
bum rides all the way back to New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, get as far as they can. Mm-hmm. But what one of the things that was interesting is he was saying how, you know, he got offered medical attention. He got offered a psychologist or a therapist mm-hmm. or something. And at the time, this is like when it's still fresh at the time, he was like, no, I feel fine. Like mm-hmm. this, that. And the therapist was kind of just like, all right, well, take my card. Mm-hmm. It's going to hit you. Right. And when it does, give me a call. And he said it didn't hit him until like months later. Mm-hmm. Months later, maybe like didn't hit him until like almost maybe a full year. Mm-hmm. And he said uh, he just couldn't go to sleep. And he just kept seeing stuff when he was going to sleep and couldn't just just miserable. Started yeah. seeing the bodies falling, the stat right. and the third, you know. So even delayed, man, it does something to your psyche. Oh, yeah. But the yeah. odds of running into it twice, you know, you know, mm-hmm. missing yeah, out on seriously. the first one and then being in the same spot for the next one. Right. I remember when I was like in ninth, no, 10th grade, in our civics class, we had somebody from the Homeland Security coming and talking with us. And I mean, this is, if I was in 10th grade, this is a year after 9 11 happened. Um, so, no, no, I was in 11th grade, so it was two years. So, um, he was showing us videos about 9-11, right? So he started showing us videos of people jumping out of the building. What? We were all just like, yeah, we were all like, what the fuck? Like, half the class, class is like bawling. We were not ready for that. And it was just like, yo, this is not okay. Like, it How was like you? literally, dude, I was in 11th grade, so I was like 16. Mm. Like so, seventeen? No, yeah, seven, yeah I think sixteen, 17. seventeen. Um, so, but we there was no warning, nothing, and I've never seen somebody like literally jumping, falling to their death. Like, why are you showing us this? It was like a montage. Yeah, yeah it was really lot. fucking weird, and I was just, I still just wondered what was the purpose of that. Like, what makes I don't get it. Let's go show to some high school kids people jumping to their death from a very fresh event. Yeah. that happened because i like i knew people were jumping but we never saw it and i remember we were all talking about that for weeks we were just like what the heck it was so weird i'm like yo government's on some fuck shit right <laughs> yeah that's so it's like meanwhile they had a part to play in 9-11 then you want to come show kids people jump into their death i don't i don't what was the purpose i don't understand but, do you think we ever go and like do something about these like mass shootings like, do you think we're ever going to be able to address this? Mm, not under this administration, I guess. I mean, but it was I don't a know. Pro- when, wait, wait, hold on, but let me ask you. Like, was I know it, it's been a problem. It's been a problem for a while. But Can't now it's like people. I'm not. I know. I'm just saying. At this point, now people are, are more vocal about problems. Mm-hmm. So now that people are being super vocal about it and protesting and you know calling for action. Um, I'm thinking maybe things will finally start to happen, but not in this administration. I'm saying, no. I know it's been a problem, but like hopefully, you know, with new people, I know that you know the Democrats took over the House, so I don't know when. I I really don't know when, <laughs> because it's still like even if there's gun control, there's still these fucking crazy people that will find ways to get guns. Yeah. So it's really tough. I don't know. The, the world's gone mad. <laughs> Pretty much. Do you yeah. think the world's as crazy as like the headlines that we see, or do you think it's probably crazier? You think so? <laughs> probably. Hmm. Do you think people are as unreasonable as they seem in comment sections? Oh God. Well, no, not in real life. People get real bold online. Like, I think about it. But I think that if you're face-to-face with a person, you would have more compassion. You know, just anything that people say to people online. You know what I mean? I feel like when you're face-to-face with somebody, you don't keep that same energy. So, no. I mean, some people do. Yeah, of course (laughs) some people do, but I mean the majority. Yeah. You know, like, some people, like, were, say, with the mom you said that was talking about, you know, the recent shooting. Um, the mom that was on there, you know, yes, saying yes, she doesn't same. want prayers, you know, she wants action. Mm-hmm. And people were saying, you know, in the comments, basically just like, eh, you know, people kill people, not the guns, whatever, whatever, finding reasons. But if you were in her face, you know what I'm saying? You wouldn't say that at a moment like that. I think like I'm kind of tired of that. What? 
that um that explanation people kill people oh times. i know but that's what i mean like i don't think that if you were in her face and you're able to feel her pain and see her you know she just lost her child you're mm-hmm. not gonna say right then and there well <laughs> so, right i saw something though that they submitted some sort of bill to, uh, to ban some sort of automatic weapon in the nra like mm-hmm. suing or some shit because they're trying to pass that bill like what why I did that's a, that's the main thing I don't understand. I don't I mean I understand the use of guns and stuff but the fucking automatic, you know, weapons. Yeah. That's where it's like why you know do y'all what? need the extreme weapons like that? We're talking from a person that, that from people that like aren't into guns. Like I I can't say I've been shooting. I want to be shooting though. But like But yeah, but I mean like that's like get but like why do you why do you need that? Sorry, you can't be one. Sorry, you can just look and dream. It's not, I mean, it's not. I mean, you know, like, do you have a? Do you maybe you're interested in bombs? Mm. There's no way you're gonna get your hand on a bunch of fucking bombs. You know, just because you're interested in it and stuff doesn't mm. mean that it's something you have to do. And those fucking what do you say for what do you say insane. for the people that have automatics that aren't doing anything with them? What it, do you have them scare, for? Well, it's a skip. Well, they just go shooting. They shoot at. What do you know? You better use a regular ass handgun. Sorry. So my thing is, how do you take those guns away from them? No, but that's what I was saying too, right? Like yeah. they're already out here. Already so out. it's like regulating that is going to take so long. You know what I want to say? Like a lot of the times, these mass shootings that happen, the school shootings, a lot of times the people aren't associated with the NRA. They obtained the gun illegally or it was yeah. somebody else's firearm. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of like the NRA. Yeah, so it's like, why are the NRA defending these people? Like, yeah, they're not but it's even like, a member. <laughs> but no, 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 no. Because I've heard numerous times the NRA saying, like, they're not a member of us. So yeah. this has nothing to do with this. But now mm-hmm. we have a guy, wasn't he an ex-Marine that did this? Oakland? I, I don't know, honestly. I don't want to say anything wrong. I don't want to say nothing wrong. Might as well look it up. Thousand Oaks. In I I struggle or whether I should be um saying the guy's name. I mean, but you wanted to know if he was an ex-Marine or not, is he? Hold on, I'm looking for it. A uh, suspect was a decorated Marine veteran. Mm-hmm. Ian David Long, mm-hmm. the former machine gunner and decorated combat veteran of the United States Marine Corps. Mm-hmm. You know, it's Veterans Day tomorrow. How fitting. Right. Um, I think it's actually today, but it's being observed tomorrow. Okay, okay. Um, but a lot of the times, the NRA banked on the fact that those people weren't a part of their association. Mm-hmm. And now you have somebody who is a decorated Marine. Right. What is the excuse at this point? Mental. Motherfuckers is crazy. Yeah, they're going nuts. <laughs> I want to know the motive. I want to know, like, yeah, always, even if it don't make sense. Like, even if it, it never makes sense. I'm sorry. It never makes sense. I apologize. And a lot of it, I think, are government, um, you know, doings. Yeah. Like, and setting these situations up. I don't know. It sounds crazy. Right, I used to listen to Alex Jones back in the day before he fucking went nuts. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and he said... This is before 2012 when I used to listen to him. So this is a long time ago. Um, And he was saying, you always talking about, you know, the government and different things that they put out trying to trick, you know, the masses and things like that. So he said the next enemy, because, you know, for a while, our enemies have, of course, been terrorists, Muslims. I'm not saying they're terrorists. I'm say calling Muslims terrorists. And, you know, that's been the whole shtick for a while here in America. You know, Uh they're the bad guys. So he said the next enemy is going to be white men. They're going to be the next enemies posed as terrorists here in America. And he said that shit back in like 2011, early 2012. So that's crazy that that now you see that because that is exactly who is there. I feel like now they need to start accepting it more. But that right now is is coming out that they are the number one threat here. Well, you heard Don Lemon. 
You're done. Let me go off. Yeah, he said it. That's why yeah, I was like, oh, see, said they're it. saying it. So that's why I was like, wow, that's crazy. But you know, but, but my thing crazy. is too they the fact that been, he was saying that. Been, of course, it's been yeah. that. <laughs> but I'm saying, as far as America, you know, of them decide not deciding, but you know, them being the person who is the enemy in mm-hmm. quotations. You know, before mm-hmm. it was focused on Muslims, now it's starting to be shifted to focus on white men. And I don't know, and a lot of it is the government's doing. So I don't know what the purpose of that is, but it's just something to pay attention to. Yeah, I have no idea where that's going. Right. Because it's like, but y'all, that's y'all. So, Mm -hmm. (laughs) if you know, why would, I don't know if you want everyone to fear white men. You know what I mean? I don't know if that's the thing. If you want it to become that they are the ones to fear. You know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. So, I don't know. It's weird. I'm tired. I don't. Mm, switching done. lanes. <laughs> yeah, switching lanes. Um, the vote just happened. Yeah. I came across this video that was kind of interesting. And it was a video. You remember one of those Russell Simmons kids? Or, or not. No, Reverend <laughs> Run's kids. The, the, the one. The one. Not, not the diggy one. What was the other one that was like trying to act hood years back? Oh, the um, the older one. Yeah, the older one. Oh, um, I forgot his name. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So he was listening in on a conversation that two two uh young black men were having about mm-hmm. politics, and the one black man was saying how don't just give your vote. Pretty much, I'm I'm doing a poor job, but he definitely articulated himself very well. Okay. But um, don't just give your vote to these Democrats. He was like, to be honest with you. Hmm. Ain't no Republican been in the hood. Mm -hmm. Right? And we rushed to give these Democratic votes and still we get no results. He Mm -hmm. was like, I don't trust the people I can see. Every Democrat done marched through the hood. You know what I'm saying? Like all these, the the Democrats have routinely targeted targeted, uh, uh, inner city Mm -hmm. to get the vote. And he's saying he's not seeing the change in that Mm -hmm. and we always say the man or republicans always trying to keep us down Mm -hmm. when the republicans ain't never in the hood it's the democrats that's right there Mm -hmm. why am i still doing bad Mm -hmm. yeah i saw did you see that too they're saying basically you need to start holding them more accountable yeah pretty much so it's really like going and demanding you know these changes to happen but that's the thing, like, and that's where it ties back into the whole system. They keep us so busy and, you know, focused on these, you know, smaller issues that we have in our life, you know, worrying about how we're going to pay the light bill, mm-hmm. you know, just being tired from work that they make us so that we don't focus on coming for their asses. <laughs> yeah. We worry you about know? so many other things. I have mm-hmm. a question. I have a question. Right? What? Um, <laughs> don't what me. What? Don't what me. Do you think an uneducated vote is still a, a vote that is? I don't know how to explain it. Like, well, I mean, most of you, us are uneducated in our no, vote. I understand that. Yeah, I understand <laughs> that. So, do you think, like, if a person is uneducated, mm-hmm. uneducated of who to vote for, mm-hmm. and you have all society? telling him they need to vote Mm -hmm. is a person just casting his vote in uneducated a good thing um should we be more educated like of course we we should we should be we should be but But, like the thing is too like it's so much bigger than us like you see too like they have the libertarian party the green party and it's like even though they may have better ideals you know (laughs) <laughs> because of so many people not educating themselves that they're just going to vote for the main parties. Um, I feel like I wasn't educated making my damn vote. I don't know these people. I mean, I slightly, I've seen what's been going on in locally in Pennsylvania with our governor, and I feel like things are better. You know, I still don't know, though, everything he stands for. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, I don't know. I feel like, though, it's, but this last election, though, it's really cool, though, to see a bunch of different types of people. 
you know, being yeah, awarded yeah. positions and a lot more younger people. So I'm interested to see what's going to be going on because usually people, well, usually we don't participate in this type of election. You know, we only make a big deal about the presidency. Mm-hmm. So it's cool to see that we're starting to make a big deal about these lower the, level the local, the elections. Local so maybe next time, you know, you'll make a bigger deal about your mayor mayor election, mm-hmm. you know, and then to, even to your neighborhood district leader. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we can, since we're getting more into politics and understanding what's going on, you know, like you said, educating yourself, understanding what's going on, maybe we'll start having... um more energy to participate in these smaller elections because these are the ones that actually affect us more so. Um, so when you start on the smaller level, it affects the bigger level, but, you know, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm so tired of politics. <laughs> <laughs> it's throwing at us like nonstop. And it's uh-huh. like, you know, that might be the tactic, get you tired of politics and you're just so uninvested. I know, and I was like, we point. need to be, we need to be involved, but it's tiring. Yeah, it's a lot. You feel mm-hmm. powerless. Mm-hmm. You do feel powerless at the but end of the day. But it's cool, though, seeing that, you know, everybody came out and voted and that, you know, a lot of Democrats got put back in position of power. So. Well, you know, it's cool to a certain extent because I was tired of seeing that damn sticker. I, I, was, I was just tired, tired of getting the text. Put... Why are you texting my phone? Man, like, where do you go? Get a text. That's so invasive. What did like, I they sign should get... up for? There's going to be some lawsuits coming out about that. <laughs> You know it. They smoothed out everything. Because it's like, who the fuck gave you guys permission to just be blowing up my phone? I never signed up for anything, you know? Mm. That's totally an invasion of privacy. And that doesn't seem like something that should be legal. Um, I know that I saw a lawsuit or a way that you can claim money is if these um, random telemarketers or even um, bills you owe, even like student loans and shit. If they keep on harassing you and calling you after you told them to stop or you've opted out, like I've had that happen to me before with some random, like, I don't even know what it was. I think they're trying to sell healthcare or some shit. Mm. And I kept on saying, put me on the do not call list. And they kept calling back from different numbers. Like it lasted for like months and it was so annoying. And then I see I could have fucking sued them. And I saw that some dude got from Navient like $300,000. Nigga done paid so, his fucking student loans off and so some. So what you're because saying is of the harassing calls. Yo, yeah, I'm getting harassed every day, son. But if if you tell them like to stop calling, essentially, stop. Calling. But I don't know what the I don't know what the, <laughs> I don't know what the bases are. Like if you owe the money, I don't know if you could tell them to stop calling. Hey, hey, stop but calling I know, me. I <laughs> and I know for sure on those like this bullshit trying to sell you something if they keep on blowing you up. After, but it has to be after you tell them don't fucking call me. Yeah. And they keep on doing it. And I've definitely had that happen to me. Um, so. All right. So I have a, I have another question. And I know we're kind of done with politics. Yeah, can, like, yeah it's what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Politics is a money game. Right? Oh, my God. You're asking another pol- political yeah, question? That's why no, I, that's why I felt I'm bad. saying I'm tired. What? All right. Never mind. Never mind. Thanks. I don't want to talk about no money, no politics. Like, you know, it's all yeah. tight in. You know, it's all I know, up. I know, I know, I know. Mine was more so. It was politics, but it was more so. What? All right. Just, I, just say it and I'll decide if I want to answer now. All right. Got gotcha. you. <laughs> um, politics being a money game, I feel like, uh, you know, the righteous thing that people fight for is getting the money out of politics. This, that, and the third. Mm-hmm. Because... Because it's a bad thing, you know, obviously, for okay. the obvious reasons. Yeah. My question is, I see groups of people, demographics of people, pull their money together, make the moves to whatever candidate, you know, and really use that as leverage over the candidate that they put in place or they want mm-hmm. to put in place. Mm-hmm. Now, do you think <laughs> just throwing your vote without that uh-huh. In place is a worthless vote. Ah, uh, that's tough because you might think niggas. <laughs> <laughs> say it, say it, say it. Nigga. You really think niggas is about to put their little fifty dollars <laughs> all that together and give this 
particular politician, you know, fucking however much, say ten thousand right, dollars. Just whatever, say ten thousand dollars, whatever, whatever it is. Whatever it is. Give this to him and say, You better do this, this and that. So what if he don't do it? All right, so here's the thing. That's there like is the, that's a gamble. There is the what if. There is the what, what if that you don't do it or whatever the mm-hmm. case is. They haven't been doing it anyway. I know, I but how do you th- hope? What do you do? Because it's like, where my money at, bitch? Well, no, I think I think what? Maybe not so much the money. Well, I'm just talking the lack of an agenda. A consensed agenda of bullet point issues we want to address before I trade over my vote. But like you said, money is in politics. So even mm-hmm. if they agree to those terms and conditions, say, True. if somebody comes to them with a fat check, you know, they're going to be like, huh, sorry, there's no consequence. You know, what are you little people going to do to me, you know, to stop me from getting this check? So, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know if we can tie them up and cut off their fingers, but. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, there's, there's, I don't know yeah. how they would be holding someone accountable without blackmailing. It's just so shasty and shady. Everything shasty. <laughs> yeah, I came across this um this interview with Tupac. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about, yeah, honestly, I feel like it wasn't an interview. It was a recorded phone call. I don't know if I sent it to you, but it was uh-huh. super interesting, right? So uh-huh. it was going over the plans he had mm-hmm. before his death. So he was okay. talking to somebody over the phone and he was talking how he wanted to. Yeah, son, it's crazy, son. Mm-hmm. And, and this made me, before I even go into this, this made me think about like my favorite rapper. What is my favorite rapper doing? For the people, so Talk. like, what does this person have planned? Like, yo, y'all rappers need to step it up. All right, but um, <laughs> they need to step you, it the fuck you up. really expect that much from them? I don't. I after hearing this, uh huh. After you hearing know, this, Pac was on another level. But what did he say? All right, so he was talking to somebody, and what his plan was getting all these rappers together, right? Mm-hmm. You know, starting a football league, baseball league, or whatever. Every rapper has their own team. Kind of like what Snoop is doing with the football. Or Snoop was doing with the football. Mm -hmm. All right. Everybody has their own team. They travel. They play the teams. And then everybody, every weekend, say there's there's a block party. Okay. He was like, any rapper that's hot right now, has a single, got to come perform for free. Uh You have the, you have the, the men in the community, do security, you have the churches cook, uh-huh. and you kind of just build that community back, right? Go ahead. Where are these, you said a baseball team? Well, he said that was one of the things, like start something like that, where each rapper in their town, where uh-huh. they're from, Oh, and they were playing the other own, people. Yeah, sponsors oh, okay. their own. That's, no, that's what I was going to say. Like, who are they yeah. playing against? Okay, I got it. So then on the weekend, they have a block party. Gotcha. Block party. Any rapper that has a single out that's doing good, whatever the case is, got to come perform for free. Uh-huh. You put the men in the community. They're running the deacons or whatever, people in the uh-huh. church. They're doing security, uh-huh. right? And he specifically said so they can get their respect back uh-huh. from these younger younger youth. Right. Right? Put them in a position of power, right? Everybody have a good time, good old time. Do this community. He said from there, what he wanted to do, is jump or jump on a on a, on a bus or whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. and go to every hood, every bad area. I mean, I don't know how they this. They were just talking briefly. This is mm-hmm. a recorded conversation. Go to every hood. Go to the hood, and say and and go to the people and say who's in charge here, mm-hmm. who's the person running the streets here. And then he was like, "You mean to tell me if me Tretch and Red Man." Jump into a joint, jump into a a, a van, jump mm-hmm. out of a van in the middle of Newark. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They come to us and we say, who's who's in charge? They're going to lead us to him. Mm-hmm. He said, we meet him. We wind him and dine him. Hit him <laughs> with the Don Perry on. Get him some steak. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he said, listen, we're asking you. We're not telling you. Mm-hmm. He was like, leave. He was like, whatever organization that you're doing right now whatever you whatever your hustle is leave it from the times of 11 p.m to 6 a.m any yeah. shootings happen between 11 a.m to 6 p.m any drug dealings happen 11 a.m to 6 a.m 
Um, he was like, PM. PM, PM. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Oh, damn. I'm like, damn, nigga. Right, right. And so um, he was like, give the kids the street back. He was yeah. like, I'm in touch with some politicians, and I think he name dropped Jesse Jackson. Yeah. He said, I'm in touch with some politicians, and he said he can have, he can get the police to back off around mm-hmm. those times. Mm-hmm. All right? So that's dope. Yeah, definitely. That's the local stuff that means a lot. It means a lot. So it got me looking at some of these rappers with the screw faces. Well, I mean, because, you know, they're just worried about themselves. Yeah. Materialism and ego. Yeah. You know, Pac was on another level. Could be helplessness, too. Huh? Could be helplessness, too. Or ignorance. You might not know better. Um, just not on that okay. level. Uh, I ain't gonna let them get that cop out that easy. You don't think so? <laughs> Helplessness? Maybe. Maybe it's too big. Maybe you don't have to pull. Not everybody got to pull that pocket. Yeah, of course not have to pull, but at least do something. You know, I mean, of course there are plenty of rappers and people uh, in positions of power and influence that are doing something, but there are plenty who are not. Mm. So. All right. Um, all right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This was a good one. <laughs> Why do these episodes always end with me being like, oh my God, all right, I'm just, I'm Because dead. that's something just... you need to work on. <laughs> oh, fuck out of here. You know what? <laughs> yeah, I need to, I need to find a way to suppress my, <laughs> my feelings of wanting to be finished. <laughs> yeah. Nah, this was a good talk. Thank you all for listening. Um, that's what I do on the phone too. I'm just like at the end of every call, I'm like, yeah. oh, all right, I'm gonna hang up. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get done, better, done with the phone. I'm, I'm I'm done yeah, with the phone. I'm like, okay, I'm I'm gonna go because it's like there's never a short conversation. It's always you know. But... Well, that's a good thing. It's always a good conversation. I guess. All right. All right. Thank you guys for listening. Absolutely. Thank Be you. Busy podcast out. All right. Bye. Peace.